What up, Allie? What up? Allie's in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in the hizzle, or in the apartment tizzle. Get it going while I finish this. Um, so I don't really know what to say or what to do. That's right, that's right. But this is our first, well it's not really our first video. This is our first sit down chat video. Um, so yeah. Okay, so glad we're doing this, finally. <laughs> we're gonna feel so good about ourselves. Yes, we will. Because we've been wanting to do this for a while, for sure. Um, if you haven't noticed, we're in May, wanted to make a huge deal about us, <laughs> that our wheelchairs had to be seen oh, in the uh, frame. So there's one wheelchair <laughs> and then there's two. <laughs> so just so you know, there are wheelchairs in this frame. Um, we are both in wheelchairs. We're both in wheelchairs. That's the point of, <laughs> <laughs> of our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel <laughs> for all of our YouTube viewers. Look, we just want to get famous, okay? <laughs> That's why we're here. Shout out to my YouTube viewers. <laughs> Instagram <laughs> handles. Uh, <laughs> Megan Blunk. That's mine. I forget mine. It's not Al me. Strong. Al Strong with two G's. Two G's. That all. Mine. Just Al Strong. Al Strong with two G's. I think mine's Megan Blunk. I don't understand when people have names that don't make sense. They're not their names, and then I have no idea who they are, yeah. and I don't have time. To figure it out. Like, stop trying to be cute. Shh. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> I mean, I'm, no, I'm kidding. If you have a creative Instagram name, I'm really secretly jealous of you. And if you know something that would be creative for me, that isn't Hot Wheels or, like, the typical shit. Yeah, Hot Wheels. That was what this guy um, tried to name me. I met him after my accident, and he totally... That's a whole nother YouTube video we're going to make about dating and how crappy people can be. But anyway, he told me that I should call myself Hot Wheels. Yeah. At the time I thought, that's kind of cute. Yeah, he made me feel good about myself. But he wasn't a very nice person. Yeah. That's what my high school Brandon, or high school, <laughs> high school boyfriend shout out Brandon he used to call <laughs> me Hot Wheels after my accident. And my mom was like, that's so cute. And it was like cute until like now that I'm 25, like don't act like you're the first guy being like, oh my God, like, yo, yeah. Hot Wheels. <laughs> like, whoa, haven't heard that one before. Like you're not, yeah, like, damn. Yeah, that's another video we'll make about people telling us that we should race when we go into like Target together. Yeah. Or asking um, if we know the speed limit. And no, we don't know the speed limit because there's no speed limit signs posted. <laughs> Do they know the speed limit? Or you're gonna get a ticket. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. I just, it's funny, I guess, but it's not. <laughs> like, it's funny. It's not. <laughs> you laugh when people say that. Well, it's like cute. Like, if it's like a grandpa saying it, like, I think it's cute. Like, if he's like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. If it's like a 40 year old man who's like, Ugh. I don't know. It, it depends on the context. Well, I understand that people don't really know what to say and they are just trying to be nice and I really respect that and I appreciate it, but, um, but they just need to know that like, they don't have to say anything or they can just say hi or, um, I don't know, just but like I don't always want to race, especially when I'm in Target and I'm gonna run people over and you don't even mean what you say because if I try and race you then you're not even you're not gonna start running. So don't say it if you don't mean it. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> don't say it if you don't mean it. As it goes for everything in life. So what else should we share for our first video? Well, 
I thought uh, we should talk about how we met because that's the start of it all. So, Allie, you start. The start of our love story. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of crazy. We really, I think, are perfect roommates. Like, this is amazing, and I'm so thankful to have her Aww, in my life me. now. It's, like, crazy. So, people always say that they, um, you know, uh, it's an awe moment. <laughs> But people always say, like, oh, I don't want to live with my friends because I don't want our relationship to be ruined and stuff like that. And I never, ever understand it because I just don't feel like living with people. Like, I'm, I'm pretty chill, and I don't get upset about things uh, unless you're mean to kids or animals. Then I get really angry. Or if you, like, shoo us out of your way, but we're not in the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, well, if you're yeah. like, yeah, if you're if but you're just rude, don't be a dick. Yes, don't be if, mean. Yeah, don't be mean. That's not nice. But usually, if you're like mean to me, I just I sometimes I cry, or I take it. I just don't understand it. We were talking about this yesterday. Like you don't understand it. We're getting off track. What, what were we talking How about? How we met? Yeah, it was meant to be. Uh, Meg and I met at an adaptive sports camp in July. She was coaching basketball, and I was um, volunteering there. And we just happened to be at the same, like, station, I guess. And then I was like, oh, I just moved here. Like, I'm trying to find a roommate. And Meg was like, what up? I'm trying to find a roommate. And I was like, oh, like, maybe we should, like, look <laughs> together. And then we kind of, like, didn't really acknowledge it. And then Are you sure you said it? I said it. No, you said it. Yeah, I said it. Okay. You were I like, and I was like, oh my god, really? And you're like, yeah, totally. I was like, okay, that'd be so cool. So then we like didn't really think it was gonna happen. No, but how did you get to California? You've always wanted to be here. I had to tell that part. I yeah, that part. that's the part I'm talking about. All right, so I've always like wanted to live in California. And my parents were like, you have this like image of California, and you think it's gonna be so great. My dad said that, and if he's watching this, dad, you know you said that. Anyways, I came out in April, I booked a trip by myself, and I, long story short, I, like, loved it, and I was like, I want to live here, I want to move here, so I went home, and um, the night I got home, I booked a one-way flight for July after my cousin's wedding to move here. I told my parents I was going to be moving, and I told them in June that I would be moving in July, so that was kind of a shocker for them, so then I ended up you here. You booked a one-way flight? Just like that. Yep, I knew I want. I knew I, after being here for a week by myself and meeting people and just being in San Diego. And you didn't even have a plan of how you were gonna like. No, I just knew my cousin was getting married and I probably should wait till after he his wedding so I wouldn't have to fly back. But you didn't have anywhere you were gonna stay. You hadn't even talked to Lindsay yet from San Diego Adaptive Sports. Oh uh, well, I met Lindsay. That's I met Lindsay, this girl Lindsay, at while I was out in April, who introduced me to other. Um, people that used wheelchairs and the one guy Jaime was like you can stay on my couch and I was like all right I have him so during like a tr the transition period so once I had like a good foundation or people I knew out here I was like all right I'm just gonna do it and once I was told that there was an adaptive sports camp I could volunteer I was like all right I definitely want to be here so I just when I went home I was like I have a camp I'll be able to participate in. And, and Lindsay said she could put you up in a hotel. For and Lindsay could put me in a hotel, so I'd be at a hotel the first couple days I got out. And then my friend Jaime and Dan said I could live with them until I found an apartment. So a new friend. You didn't even know them. Yeah. Yet. Why knew Jaime? Oh. The gym. You met him at the gym when you came the first time? Yeah. But you didn't know. You just met him. I just met him. And he was like, look. He's like, I moved. I moved. I get it. If you need a place to crash at and I was like all right so I kind of went home knowing like I have connections I'm just gonna just gonna do it so I booked the one-way trip and I yeah I'm down here that's pretty crazy <laughs> <coughs> well my turn yeah your turn well I have been on a crazy journey I have been so lost these last two years after the 2016 Paralympics where I played wheelchair basketball in Rio and we won gold and it was awesome and it was exciting and I always thought that that's a whole other story too but <laughs> I just 
had no idea that I would have no idea about my life after that. And so I tried to get a career going instead of like just training and playing and it's really hard to do both. So I told myself that I was going to get a job and a career and a foundation so I wouldn't be struggling for the next three years of my life when I was planning on trying out for the USA team this last year. I couldn't try out in 2017 after the 2016 Paralympics because I had to finish my internship to get my master's in social work because I wanted to finish college and have that done. And I had to keep putting my internship off because it was a seven month full time, you know, uh, I think 32 hours a week uh, internship and I couldn't miss that for like training camps and um, tournaments and stuff. And so I did that and then I was going to try out in 2018, so in this last January. I booked my flight and everything for tryouts and then I decided I'm struggling. I was trying to go to the gym before and after my internship and it was so hard training on my own, not being in college and adaptive sports is a whole nother, it's just a whole nother environment um, as opposed to able-bodied sports where you have all these opportunities and training and you know just things that you can do so I was stressed out all the time I was exhausted and I just and I was broke always broke like that's just how it goes when you're an athlete and I didn't want to live the next three years of my life trying to get to Tokyo like that so I yeah like I said I told myself I was going to get a job so I found this amazing opportunity with another, someone that I had met at the um, LA a, a, Abilities Expo, I think is what it's called. I forgot. Um, but it was, I met him and he seemed like this angel that was going to totally, you know, just help me. Um, he was a mentor. I had reached out to him a few times after I'd met him. And when I realized that I wanted to be an assistive technology professional and fit people for wheelchairs and get them what they need and do it right so that they're not stuck in wheelchairs that are way too big for them for the next five years of their life until insurance covers the new one. Um, that's, that was my plan and I contacted him and asked him if I could maybe work for him um, and he told me that that would be awesome and he's in California so I, I moved, I canceled my flight to tryouts and I said I'm going to take this year and I'm going to get my career started because he told, my, the guy I was working for told me that he would support me in training and um, and then, and that was like, that was too good to be true, you know, to be able to train and I would have to miss for the tournaments, like world championships which are happening right now in Germany, I would have to miss an entire month of work for, you know, three to four weeks for this tournament. Um, and then Parapan Games next year and then the Paralympics, like uh, careers just don't work like that. So I, I went with it and I moved to California in April. <laughs> Much. Just like the story, it's hard for me to like put it. That's why I always write in vlogs, and then I can type and like edit it. But um, so I moved out here in April, and then a month into my job, I got laid off because the company is going under. And um, it was a wake up call. It was a, such a struggle, and I was living in Oceanside, which is like an hour to an hour and a half from San Diego, and an hour to three hours from Los Angeles and nothing is happening in Oceanside really that I needed in my life and so I was so lost and struggling and I just kept, started putting myself out there as much as possible I have to go in through quite a funk of depression and um, and I just tried to have faith and believe that the more I put myself out there something would happen and I would meet the right people and anyway I met Allie at the San Diego Adaptive Sports Camp that I volunteered at. Um, it was the second Adaptive Sports Camp I volunteered at, and it was literally meant to be. <laughs> that's that! Oh, man, that's that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what else should we talk about? So basically, we're just chilling. Mm -hmm. Allie got this couch. I got this couch because I got a job, so I tr treated ourselves to a couch. She's an occupational therapist. Yeah. Which is amazing. She's so 
just like driven and smart and uh, got her shit together. And it makes me feel like shit about Why? myself. Why? Success is in different aspects of our lives. Olivia, my best friend from college, and I were talking about Allie when we first met her. Because Olivia came to visit me, and then she volunteered at the camp with me and met Allie. And I was like, I don't know if I could live, like, do this because I'm very intimidated by Allie. She oh makes my god. Me, <laughs> because so I feel dramatic. I feel like such a failure right now. You went to the Paralympics. I never went I never did anything like that. I just went to school. Okay, and now you have a career mind. that's gonna pay like ninety thousand a year. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's what OTs make. Okay, I don't know how much she's gonna make. She hasn't told me her salary, but it's like probably it. more than that. No. But uh I I just I do I feel like a failure, but Ali, Ali's awesome and she's. You dude. went to the Paralympics and did all that stuff and had people look up to you. Because you did that. Yeah, and that's what I want to do. I want to help people. I want I want to you know I'm like, the intense athlete that's uh, very. How would you you describe me and I'll describe you. You're very passionate. You don't like to do things you're not passionate about. You're very, you want to help people and like, you know what you're good at and like, you're good at working with people and like, you want to help them adjust to their new life and you're driven by what you love in your heart, which is helping other people get through whatever. And I just don't think you want to settle for some, you don't want to settle for something that you're like, just going to do just to get money or just because that's what everyone else does. And you're a hard worker and you stay busy and I think you put yourself in opportunities that make you feel uncomfortable because you're just trying to get, not like recognize, but just put yourself in a fire and get work hard. True that. <laughs> yeah. You're not a failure, Megan Blunk. <laughs> I know. You're crazy. You're like, what can I do next? Right? I found this. I want to do this opportunity. And, all that. and some people are just like sitting on their bones at home and you're like, I'm just going to do this. You like, if there's not a door, you like break down the wall and make a door. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Cause that's what my, my neighbor called me. The make train. There you go. <laughs> it was like coming in hot and just, yeah, I'm a mess, but you're not a mess. But I'll figure you're it just, out. You're not mess. It's going to work out. And I'm really, like, so moving down to San Diego was, like, I need to be where everything is happening and where the opportunities are. And I took such a leap of faith. I used all the money I had saved up and paid. We, we both paid three months out straight. And we're just, like, Ali hadn't had a job, didn't have a job set up yet. Um, and I have no idea what I'm doing still, but, um, we just knew that within three months we will figure it out and Ali found a job and I'm still figuring it out. You just went to Philly for a basketball camp and you were, she has big things going on. She just can't say anything. So, well, okay. I did one big thing this weekend. Yeah. And we've been here for less than a month and you went to yeah. Philly for that basketball stuff. Like you're not. She's not just sitting at home. Like, she's busy. She's really super busy. She does ba the basketball with the guys down here. Like, yeah. I'm putting you know, myself a lot out there. Of stuff going on. It's just not a nine to five job, but that shouldn't matter because you're doing something. You're trying, you're going for opportunities that you're passionate about. I just believe that, you know, I'm having faith, like, strong faith that if I follow my heart and I keep trying to do good things, which all I want to do is good things and I want to make things happen for other people, I want to be a role model and I, I know how important it is in the adaptive sports world and even with people with disabilities in general to have people to look up to and I just, I want to use what I've been through. That's what drives me every day is that and so I think it's just amazing that me and Allie both have, you know, we both have spinal cord injuries and we're living together and every day I get to have her to look up to as well as someone who's going through things every single day with pressure sores and just every situation, like, 
There's so many things. There's no curb cuts right no now. No curb cuts. Parking's oh like gosh. finding people to um, help bring in groceries, <laughs> which I did today. Shout out to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had so many groceries and I was like, Meg called me and she's like, where are you? And I'm like, I just got out of my car. And this guy was walking by and I was like, hey. And he's like, yeah. I was like, do you live here? And he's like, yeah. I was like, will you help me? And he's like, yeah. So he helped me carry and stuff. And, and it's far away. It's far away. If I didn't have him, it would have taken me, at, I'm not even kidding, a half an hour to bring the yeah. one bag. Because they were heavy. And there's cobblestones, there's curves, yeah, there's, there's hills, everything. Things I've tr- things fall out. We've tr- we've brought in like lots of crap, and it took us like a good amount of time to be able to bring it all here without just falling out of our lap and then picking it up and rolling backwards. Yeah. So yeah, it was not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But it's so great to be, to be around her every day because she's so chill. And we just, like I said, living together, people, like, oh, I never got to my point, is people always say that they don't want to live with their friends because they don't want... <laughs> you said that forever ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I never finished it. But they always, they don't want to ruin their friendships, and I've never understood that. Well, we didn't really have a friendship to begin yeah. with. Well, yeah, but, like, I don't, don't, I feel like, why is it so hard to live with anyone? Like, just be cool. And, but that's not how it always is, and... So I asked Allie when we were eating lunch one day before we moved in, and I was like, um, I was like, we should do like a little, you know, questionnaire where I can learn about you and you learn about me, and we can, because I know that you know people sometimes, you know, it's all good right now, but things come up later. And she was like, I've I've never had a problem with living with people. I just I don't understand that. And I was like, and in my head, I was like, oh, I feel the same way, but not everyone feels that way. But it's true. Like she's. Well, yeah, but you didn't have a problem. It was just other people, but like, we just we get it. Everything works perfectly. It's amazing, and every day I get to see her working her ass off to just be, just live life, like picking things up off the floor, cleaning. I took a three-hour nap today in the morning. So. <laughs> just everything, like getting off her butt because the pressure sore. I got a pressure sore. That's why we're sitting like this. Um, Wait, chance, baby. Yeah. And uh, and I just realized I have my quad muscles and I can Should stand I up a bit. Weight shifts. My dog gets it. Oh. Shit. No. no. They're not gonna watch. This is like you never twenty two minutes in. You never know. We might have to edit that out. Twenty two minutes. So I feel better about it. Okay. It's gonna take a lot of work, but if I get my dog better, we can do that. <laughs> um. Anyway. Yeah, everything's great. It's been awesome. Yeah. And we want to post a lot of videos of doing things and just living Our life. daily life. Yeah. Just because I know a lot of, not a lot of people have support. Um, like, they don't know a lot of people with disabilities. And I've played a lot of sports and I've been around it. And I've gotten to learn from all these amazing, strong girls and guys. And um, gotten to be shown the way and have role models. But... And being, like, real. Yeah. And raw. Yeah, exactly. We want to be real and raw. So, if you could let us know what we should talk about or do or, you know, anything like that, that would be great. Um, okay. I think that's it. 22 minutes. I think that's a How good... How do you see that? Where is that? That's, it's just a guess, but I think that's, Thank like, God. I can't squiggle. I can't even see my freaking face. I know my head's here. I just can't see my face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Ciao. <laughs> now we have to get up off the couch. Transfers. That's all, Meg. She's up a little bit. <laughs> I'll still let you go. <laughs>